All right, computer artists, uh, this lesson is one that you can just watch, or if you want to, you can open up your own picture and follow along to learn these tricks. Um, so this is advanced cloning. Um, even though we're actually not gonna use the cloning tools a whole lot in here, um, I'm gonna show you some considerations, some more advanced stuff that you can be doing in that uh, Spot the Difference project. Um, again, not required. There's some really cool stuff in here though, guys. All right, so first of all, first thing I'm gonna show you is um, when you're cloning over some stuff, sometimes you might have to make a, a secondary copy of things. So I'm gonna zoom in. <clears throat> Shoot, sorry. Let's try that again. Uh, I'm gonna zoom in here. So let's say I wanted to clone his head and put it on his body, okay? Well, the problem is his head is smaller than his head. So before I even were to clone this, you would wanna clone over his head first. So I, I'm gonna do a real bad job here, guys, because I wanna, for the sake of time, um, just wanna speed things up a little bit. So um, I would clone over his head. Again, I'm doing a bad job, okay? I wanna make that clear, this is terrible. You would wanna take your time Blech. Okay, we're, we're gonna pretend that you get the general idea here, right? So you would clone over his head. We're gonna pretend that that's really good. Um, then you can sample and clone. So the easiest way, make that brush as big as you can. So you make this real simple, clone it. And there you go, okay? Now, obviously, you need to do some fine tuning. I'd have to clone this part of the wall. Um, you're also going to have to reangle. So I can't reangle it. So I'm going to show you something. Okay, this is where the advanced stuff comes in. Now, that's not really advanced. It's just thinking through how to use the clone step tool. So in your layers panel, right now we have one background layer because I would need to transform his head and warp it to get it to fit the other guy's body. So before I clone, I am going to make a new layer. So I'm gonna click on this button here, that's the new layer button. And I'm gonna rename it, because I'm gonna, and we'll have a lesson on layers later, but this is bare minimum. And I'm just gonna call it uh, new head, just so I, I know what's on this, okay? So I'm gonna click back on the background layer to make that the active layer. I've got my clone stamp. I'm gonna clone, okay, so I hold, I'm holding down my alt key, I click. Now, before I clone though, I'm gonna switch to this layer and now I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna click. Because what I've done is I've put it on its own layer, so now I have more control. So now if I wanted to, I could kind of get rid of all of this other yellow stuff. So I'm gonna grab something called the Magic Eraser. And some of you guys have already been playing around with some of the stuff. Magic Eraser just means it's gonna erase based on common pixels of color. So if I click out here, it's gonna get rid of that yellow. Um, I can manually grab the regular eraser tool and kind of get rid of that and erase it. Okay, you, you guys get the idea, right? So that's the benefits of putting on its own layer. Now, beyond that, I still need to transform this thing. So it does need to be rotated a little bit. Again, in the layers lesson, you're gonna learn about transformations, but I'm gonna go up to edit, and I'm gonna go to free transform. So free transform is how you resize things. So you can let it hover out here, and if I turn, it's gonna rotate it. I can move it. Um, I can stretch and make it bigger if I need to. So I'm gonna try to position that, and I hit enter to apply it. That's better, okay? but it's still not exact. I need to do some warping, okay? I literally need to move and stretch this guy's face so it, it fits better. Um, in order to do that, in this new layer, you're gonna convert it to what's called a smart object. So I'm gonna right click on this and I'm gonna go to convert to smart object. I'm not gonna go into what that means here. You just need to know you gotta do that step in order to, to use the warp. So I'm gonna go back up to my edit, but instead of going to free transform, I'm gonna go to transform warp you're gonna get this weird little grid. Now this is where if I need to stretch his neck down, so if you've ever like heard about how Photoshop can like, like an in Instagram, like the Kardashians, they kind of change their features, they make certain parts <clears throat> look bigger and other parts look smaller, right? This is what they're doing, okay? Um, they or somebody else is using Photoshop to warp. So if you're like, oh, maybe, you know, the ears need to come in, I wanna narrow his face, I wanna make it bigger, whatever, you can do that and then you hit the check mark or you hit enter to apply it. 
Okay, so that's your warping. And again, I'm doing this fast. Um, another way to stretch things, because sometimes you have to stretch, okay, you have your copies of things. I'm gonna go back, I'm gonna show you one more thing on copy. So let's say I want to make another copy of her, right? For whatever reason, or maybe I wanna switch the ties. You're gonna use one of those selection tools. So remember your selection tools are up here and yes, we have a lesson all on selections coming up. That's why this is advanced and not mandatory. Um, I'm gonna use something called the quick uh, selection tool. So you basically paint on a selection. So I'm going to paint over, it's now selected his tie. I'm gonna show you how to make a copy of that and put it on its own layer. It's another way, instead of using the cloning tool, you can make copies. So instead of like using the clone tool to make a copy of his head, I could have done this method. So I've selected it, and then you can either go do it the long way and go to edit, copy, and then edit, paste, or I can just use the keyboard shortcut, which is Control and J. Now, what I've done is, now I've got another copy of that tie, I can grab my move tool, and I can, I can move that tie over. So like if I wanted to put two ties or, or something weird, okay? So that's yet another thing I'm showing you, right? Advanced stuff. Now here's where the fun comes in. We're gonna click back on that background layer and I'm gonna show you something called the liquify filter. This thing, guys, is rad. So you're gonna go up to filter, liquify. Now there's lots of different options in this liquify dialog box. I'm gonna bring this over here and hopefully I can resize it so we can see it here. Okay, I gotta make this thing way smaller. Okay, so you've got some options. I'm gonna, first of all, I'm gonna zoom in on her face because that's where I'm gonna do my warping. It's another way to warp and change. So you've got some effects in here. So you've got a forward warp and I'm gonna undo these things. It works just like a brush, okay? So if I click and drag with the warp, so like let's say I want to put horns on her head, right? That's, that's this one. Let's say I wanted to make her nose a little bit smaller, or let's say I wanted to make this, her necklace bigger, okay? Um, I can use what's called the bloat option, which is over here. So all I'm doing is clicking and holding and brrr, it gets bigger. Um, conversely, pucker does the opposite. So if I click on pucker and I click and hold, brrr, it's gonna go small. So I can make things bigger or smaller, right? Cool, so you've learned uh, the forward warp, you've learned these ones. All right, now I'm gonna show you a crazy tool. So we're gonna click on the reconstruct tool. And now when we first got in here, you might have seen some little like boxes around the faces and it identifies which is which face. I'll be honest guys, I don't remember if she was face one, two or three. Cause through the AI, it um, it's gonna identify where the faces are. And I'm gonna do something really fast because I don't remember if she's I one, two, or three. Oh, okay. She's not face one. She's face two, maybe? Yeah, okay, she's face two. Um, and I'll, I'll show you how I know she's face two. So let's zoom in. I'm gonna zoom in on her again. So this is where the AI comes in. So we're on face two. You can, and it, it breaks down the face because it's identified um, that there's a face in there it can identify the features. So, like it's gonna say your eyes. You can make, so this is the left eye, this is the right eye. I can make them bigger or smaller. Bigger or smaller. I can change the height of the eyes. Okay, you see that happening? I can change the width of the eyes. The eye tilt. This is so rad, right? Um, the distance between the eyes, I also can deal with the nose. I can make the nose height. So you literally can like play God with these people and restructure their faces, right? Bananas, uh, mouth, bananas. Okay, now, if you haven't already believed that you can't trust photos in the media anymore, this should do it for you. You cannot trust images that you see, okay? Um, so that's this one here, that's that reconstruct tool. There's are some other ones. You've got the face tool, you got, uh, that you can just kind of play around with. The face tool does similar things. It just gives you a little bit more that you can play with. If you like what you've got here, 
which that is just all sorts of scary, um, you would click cancel. If you want to, you can reset. There's a reset option here. You can reset all um, or click cancel, right? But I'm gonna say, yep, I like that thing. All right, so I've shown you a couple different things. I've shown you how to clone entire things by first cloning over um, something before you clone on top. Sometimes that's necessary. I've shown you how to make duplicate copies of things. And last, but certainly not least, I have shown you those liquify filters, okay? Oh, also, wanna remind you, I did show you how to use that warp using something called the smart object warping. All right, if you have questions, let me know. Otherwise, have some fun with this. If nothing else, uh, it'll give you some giggles. Good job.